Aloha. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. This is Master Paul and I am very grateful to be connecting with you today. It is a Wednesday and it is the 16th of the month. I know because I just came back from the bank and put the date on something. So it's the 16th of August 2017 and I'm very grateful for your presence here today. Today should be an interesting uh, topic. And the topic is one that should reach a lot of souls. And it is on how to be okay with all those people in our lives that are not okay with our spiritual awakening. I'm going to talk to you about this topic today and offer you some uh, insights, some humor, some perspective, and help you to um, position this possible uh, irritation in a way that it can be of value for everybody. And so a lot of times it just requires perspective. Sometimes we have people who care about us that don't recognize us once we awaken. And then they treat us like we're a stray dog. And so today we'll talk about that. So it should be a fun, should be an interesting topic to say the least. Last two days have been very powerful, very potent days with a great deal of valuable wisdom in them. Uh, we focused on Monday, we focused on being positivity through releasing negativity. Received a lot of positive feedback on that. So if you missed that one, I encourage you to subscribe and friend me. And then you can come to my Facebook page and just uh, scroll through it and you'll see that on there and then also um, uh, you can above me is the uh, archives that you can access which makes it easy as well okay <clears throat> then yesterday what did we focus on yesterday it'll come to me in a minute but it was also very well received so we'll go ahead and check in with everybody. So welcome Richie Souter, welcome Amanda, welcome Abby Lynn Olson, Aloha Lisa, welcome to uh, Trizzle. Tell me your name again. You said it's not Trizzle, but I forget what it is. Welcome Dana, Aloha Don, Aloha Liliana, welcome Stephanie, welcome also to Kristen Strachan, Aloha Jose, welcome Amy Hugerk, Tracy, there you go. I'll try to remember that. Tracy. Welcome Jody. Welcome Liliana. Aloha. Welcome also to Bobby Brooks. And Aloha Amanda. Aloha Sharon. Welcome to Shelly. Aloha Jody. Welcome Sharon. Uh, to Anne Marie. And Mike Capo. Welcome Janet. Aloha. To Anne Marie Grant. And Lisa Carter. Welcome Jennifer Maria. Welcome also to Irma Kennison. And welcome Carol Pico. See some new names popping in here. Great to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome Maria Franklin. Welcome Lisa Bellavance. Welcome Candy. Uh, Aloha. To Peggy Blake. I think we're all caught up here. Facebook's been making some adjustments on their live stream. On my side, uh, they changed a few things. Every month or so, they change something. And so sometimes the scroll doesn't work. It doesn't like go through where I can see who's tuning in. Welcome, Crystal. So thank you all for joining today. For those that are just tuning in, this will be focusing on being okay with all those that are just not okay with our spiritual awakening. I'm sure that if you are watching, you can probably relate to that. There are probably some people in your life that you wished was either on the same page as you or at least didn't grade you, put you down, or put you in a pocket uh, along with the other people they don't understand and they have choice names for. So today I'll share with you some insights on that. Welcome Tina Yates and aloha also to Elizabeth Parola.
so one thing about the live streams is that they do uh, they do require uh, a good internet connection or a good 4G connection so you may have to move yourself to get into a good connection zone so while you are all tuning in I'm going to go ahead and connect as I do with every live stream heart to heart soul to soul to connect everybody we do that with uh, the source soul song of love peace and harmony and we'll talk about this subject matter in a little while but first we want to connect because we are a community and we're a community of like-minded people who are awakened so let us drop our left hand in front of our heart center right hand and gently remaining pointed towards heaven this is a hand mudra position and i will bring call forth the beings of light uh, dear our beloved creator all layers of the divine dial the source Dear all masters and ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, all Buddhas and bodhisattvas, angels, healing angels, archangels, our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you, we honor you, respect you, we invite you to please be present at this time. We truly are humbled by the deeper and deeper awareness of your constant love, guidance, and presence. We are very grateful for all of the blessings that you offer us each and every day. And we thank you for saving our lives, known or unknown. We ask you to be present to sit in each of our heart centers to help us to awaken our compassion so that when we do communicate with other souls that do not understand us, we do so in a way that honors us and them. Dear the Source, Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, Love you, honor you, appreciate you. Please turn on. We invite all souls in all universes to turn on their source soul song of love, peace, and harmony to chant with us to offer this unconditional service. So again, for those that are new, this is a mantra. This is a healing instrument. Uh, Kristen has posted the links in her chat. Thank you, Kristen. And so you can track it back and download that song by yourself. Uh, it is currently translated in 43 languages and the request is that you share it with everybody freely because the more people that chant this mantra the more purity on mother earth thank you to all who are sharing this live stream let us connect for those that are new uh, close your eyes this is a blessing just received lu la lu la li lu la lu la la li Lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la. Oh, I was in Erling. Oh, I run run lay. Only wrong her mushung shung I ping on a she shung I ping on a she I love my heart and soul I love all you Humanity, join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Ha. How, how, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's check in with who else has joined us. <clears throat> so welcome also to Julia Lawrence and welcome also to Liz Wong. Aloha Dan Marino and Mar Marino or Martino? Martino. And welcome also to uh, Johnny. If anybody else, if I haven't mentioned your name, please forgive me. Thank you for joining today. So show of hands. Welcome also to Ruby Blue. Show of hands, happy faces. How many people have been ostracized 
very fancy English word, or a less fancy English word, how many people have been put out by those who they thought were close family and friends, but then decided that they didn't like you so much after you awoken, after you became aware of your soul and your spiritual journey, after you became aware of the lies of humanity and they're still asleep. How many of you have had this experience in your life? Good, starting to see lots of pop-ups, lots of happy faces, smiles, people saying, yep, that includes me. Yeah, a lot of people don't know what to do with us uh, when we awaken. Part of the reason, a big part of the reason, is because they don't recognize you anymore. Now, it's very, very important to put yourself in their shoes so that you do not become so irritated uh, with their lack of awareness and their lack of intelligence in many cases. Um, we have to be compassionate because they will wake up. And they will be coming to you at some point in time. Most of us, we pull the religious uh, card. Not a direct religious card, but listen to me, listen to me all the way through. What is the religious card? The religious card is where people try to shove something down your throat because that's their truth. And the more they try to shove it down your throat, the more fearful they are of their truth being untrue. It's very important to recognize that because if, if you ever come across a person that is very, very zealous on their belief system, and this is not a religious argument here, and this is just a perspective, okay? You don't have to agree with it. If you come across a person that is very, very zealous on their belief system, then what happens is they will defend it to the nth degree and they will often try to shove it down our throats to the nth degree. And if you try to share with them uh, any of the frailties of their belief system, they become very, very irritated and very defensive. Now, I tell you this for a very specific reason because I'm going to come around for a circle so that you can have more compassion. These types of folks, which could be our parents, our peers, our friends, they could be people that just we meet on the street. But these types of folks, the reason they're so adamant and so connected to their belief system is because that is their root. That is their pillar. Imagine that you had a house built on four columns, nothing underneath, just air and four columns. And those four columns were the pillars of that staunch belief system. If you go and knock out one of their pillars with a truthful statement, something that you have come to recognize that maybe you had that pillar, but you come to recognize it's no longer a truth. But for them, it, 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 it very much is. If you go and you try to knock out that pillar, of course they're going to be extremely defensive. We have to be compassionate for where people are. Because if we knock off that pillar, what in essence are we doing for that person that's very staunch in their belief system? We are in essence saying everything you built your life around is false. Now what do you think happens if you knock down that pillar? They go through a process of extensive purification. That person does not want that purification. They can't in most cases handle the truth that we have come upon on a slow, natural pace. In almost every case, we have awakened at our own pace because our soul has guided us here and there to this teacher, that teacher, this card reader, that psychic, this crystal person, that you know, master, whatever it might be. We go zig, 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 zag, 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 zag across the ocean. The wind moves us here and then we move there. No one ever goes across the ocean straight if they're in a sailboat. If you're a soul, you're on a sailboat. You go here and you learn and 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 eventually you get to the port where you need to be. The people 
that are not awakened, they're out there with their boat and they're rowing in a circle. They're rowing in a circle. They're not awakened yet. They're still asleep. Why do I tell you this before I give you the information that I came to share with you? Because if we cannot have compassion for where other people are at, how can we expect them to be honoring of where we are at? Think about it, guys. We have to be honorable and respectful of where everybody is at on their soul journey. And it's very hard for some of those people that are close to us. It can be very, very difficult because the people that are closest to us are the ones that we love. They're the ones that we want their approval from. The ones that are our peers, parents, etc., whether we want to admit it or not, we want their approval. Why? Well, maybe because we know we're right and we know their information is incorrect. That could be one possible thing. Maybe because we haven't got it our whole life and for once wouldn't it be nice to get it? Uh, this is one possibility of why we have such an attachment to them agreeing with us. And it is an attachment. It's important to understand that if we have a frustration or an irritation around someone in our world that just doesn't get us, that's our problem, not theirs. It's a tough one to swallow. It's our attachment. It's our issue, not theirs. So part of this wisdom is for you to take responsibility for your attachments, for you to take responsibility for the need to have other people's approval, uh, the need to share your wisdom with other people, okay? Here I am sharing my stuff with you. Do I have attachments to you receiving it the way I share it? Probably. I probably have attachments in many areas in hopes that you will receive this wisdom in a way that benefits your soul journey. But I have to detach from the outcome. Why do I repeat? If you have been following me for this year, you'll notice I repeat many things. Why? Because what time did you get it? Was it the 10th repetition? Was it the 20th repetition where your, your light bulb finally came on and you go, oh, I get it now. The reason it's important to um, have no attachment is because it blocks us from being in a place of compassion for ourselves in our journey and compassion for others in theirs. When we have someone close to us, like a spouse, this happens a lot. And the uh, structure that I'm working with, my teacher is Master Shah. Uh, most of you know that, many of you may not. I encourage you to learn more about him. Master Shah is, uh, is a master from the East. He brings Eastern philosophies right away that can butt up against Western philosophies and belief systems. He also brings a lot of information around soul, the information around miracles, information about healing, and all of those can butt up against people's belief systems. Master Shah offers uh, a lot of free things. He also charges money for many of his things. I offer a lot of free things. I also charge money for some of the things I do. But people have belief systems that if you offer a, a service that is spiritually related, it should be free. Okay? So if Master Shah charges for something, people have a negative perception. So therefore, um, there are a lot of people in this organization that are, they, they have pain because they have been around this teacher long enough to know the purity of his heart, the purity of what he's trying to do for humanity, and the spouse or the parent or somebody like that has not, and they have very, uh, very limited knowledge, maybe 2% of the truth, of they draw a conclusion. This probably happens in various ways for you in your world. Maybe you're studying crystals, maybe you're studying uh, aliens, maybe you're studying uh, all things soul. Maybe you're studying all things Reiki. Maybe you're studying all things um, Ayurvedic. It doesn't matter what your specialty is or what your, where you're at on your zig and your zag of your sailboat tour to your soul journey. We're all on a different zig and a different zag on the way home. 
those closest to you, those people that care about you, the farther you zig and zag away from their rowboat, remember they're going in a circle because they haven't awakened yet, the, the less they recognize you. They love the old version of you. They want the old version of you. You, of course, do not want that, but they do because that's all they understand. So we have to be compassionate for that. We should not put our stuff upon them. We should not push our uh, perspectives and beliefs upon them any more than we would want them to push theirs upon us. Think about it. I know, I know unequivocally without whether I know you or don't know you, I know unequivocally that each one of you have tried to push your belief system, your reality upon others. How do I know that? Because I've tried it and it's failed. Why did I do it? Because I wanted validation. I wanted approval. I wanted somebody to know that, hey, this is my aha moment and this is great. I want you to have the same experience. A lot of the, why, the reason why I share because I want other people to have the same ahas and the values that I get. Okay, there's my attachment. Yours may be similar, but if you look into it, you will find that we all have an attached reason, a reason for wanting to share. Sometimes it's so we're not alone. Sometimes it's because we want people's permission. Sometimes it's because we want their approval. Sometimes it's because we want them to, to have the same benefits we have. Sometimes it's all of the above intermixed. And it hurts a lot when they turn us down, when they deny us, when they put labels on us or what we are doing or following. It hurts when they are ignorant. It hurts when we try to bring something that could truly value their life and that's our purpose and intention. We just want to bring value to their life and we get slapped with a label or a judgment or a criticism. I know you have received those uh, uh, kicks as well. All of us have been kicked in the same way by those that we care about. So this is true if you're watching this for each and every one of us. So how do we bring ourselves to the table moving forward and how can we uh, work with all of those that we care about but are kind of the distance between us is still occurring? You may have some good friends from high school days and you've kept a great deal of, of uh, connection until such time as you awoken and you want them to awaken as well but the distance seems to be increasing. So show of hands, uh, unhappy faces. How many people have had that where um, you feel kind of sad that you don't have those same people in your world that you used to because you've awoken and they're still asleep. How many people fit that category? I imagine quite a few of you. And so what happens is those people truly need us even more. Those friends, those family members, they need you. You are a universal servant. You are an awakened being on the path of further awakening. It does not mean you are right. Get away from that ego response, okay? That's not where this is going. I'm not right. If I tell you right now my information is right, I'm immediately wrong. Why? Because I am always learning. You are always learning. The information I'm sharing for me feels accurate at this time, but I'm more than willing to adjust it with additional information coming in, as you should be. So do not get on your high horse of thinking you're right. When you bring yourself to anybody that you care about and they have a misperception about you, the way to align that perception with them is with love, with forgiveness, and with honoring where they're at. One of the simplest ways to honor where they're at is to simply uh, be present to them. Whatever is important for them to talk about, 
talk about it. If you want to have them in your life and you want that uh, closeness that maybe you used to have or it's kind of drifted a bit, be present to them with whatever is important to them. You, if you're distant from them, have probably not been doing that. Why? I can only guess, but one of my guesses would be um, you find it difficult to find common ground with them now because your interest is peaked in this other awakening direction. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. You have a life choice where you could go this awakening direction and let those people go their direction. That's a possibility. But have those people brought value to their to your life? Have they been there for you? Have they supported you? Have they honored you in most cases with this exception where they don't really recognize you anymore? Okay? If those people have been important to you, then you can be important to them by being there for them with whatever is important in their world. You do not have to breach the subject of what's important to you. And if they bring it up, that doesn't give you permission to download on them. That's another mistake we all make, okay? Understand the nature of humans. When two humans talk, if one just listened and the other one just talked, at the end of that conversation, the one that talked would say, I don't know what it is about that person, but I really like them. Think about it. The person that just listened is very liked very appreciated. The person that talks likes you no matter what. Why? Because all you did was you were present for them validating. But if you're going your own direction, following your own uh, awakening path and forgetting about all those that you do care about, then you are not serving your family. You are not serving your soul journey. The soul journey is not about separation. It is about oneness. The soul journey is not about I'm right, you're wrong. The soul journey is about honoring everybody where they're at on their soul perspective. Because their soul and our soul are brothers and sisters. When we go back up to heaven, we realize that down here, maybe not so much, but we are very much connected. And when we uh, be in that place where we used to be, of honoring them, being there for them, speaking to them with love and compassion. If we do enough of that, what will happen is their hearts will open to us again. Okay? That's a good thing. We want that. They will uh, ask curious questions. It might be, why do you follow that guy? You know he's a charlatan. Or... Why do you do that? That stuff doesn't work. But that's a perspective based on a limited amount of information. So let's deal with that. When these people say these things, which they do and have and will, and as you reconnect with them using this wisdom, they will do and say these things again. Now you have an opportunity to approach it very, very differently. You can use um, a traditional, uh, and I don't want this to come across the wrong way, but the information I'm going to share with you is very valuable if you can remember it. And it's called a sales technique, but the value in it is the approach. It is called FFF, feel, felt, found. Repeat, feel, felt, found, FFF, feel, felt, found. So somebody says to you, why do you follow that person? Why do you do that? You know, that stuff doesn't work. You just say, you know, I know how you feel. I was there in, in your shoes for a long, long time. I felt the same way as you currently do. And I honor exactly where you're at. I have no animosity, no judgment, no criticism. It's perfect for you. But what I have found is that this assists me to feel more open-hearted, more uh, honoring of me and my soul journey. 
So you're not saying they're right or they're wrong. You're honoring where they're at. And you do it in such a way where they can't really argue with you. Um, and they may drop it right there. They probably will just drop it right there because you haven't butted up against them. You said, I love you. I honor you. I was where you're at and it's perfect for you. And I honor that. But what I have found is for me, this is what's perfect for me. And if this person comes back at you with a few barbs, right? Which is typically related, keep in mind, the earlier conversation. If the person comes back at you and says, yeah, but da 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 da, they didn't hear, okay? They did not hear what you just said. They were still in a defensive posture. They were still in a I'm right posture. If people stay in the I'm right posture, it's because they have attachments to their four columns. Do you remember that? I just spoke about that earlier. This is where your compassion must come in. Their four columns are their belief system. They feel threatened. Their belief system is what they built their entire world upon. So if you uh, react to their reaction, you lose again. You must recognize. If they come back af after you done, feel, felt, found, I honor where you're at. Know that they did not hear you, that they are in a defense posture because they are defending their belief system because they think that the person they fell in love with, the person they like, their kid, their whatever, um, this person that they've known, that now they're trying to save you from making a serious mistake based on their belief system. But what they're really doing is they don't want you knocking down theirs. So you smile, you be compassionate because you remember this wisdom and you say to them, I love you. Remember, love melts all blockages. I love you, mom. I love you, dad. I love you, my husband, my wife, my spouse. I love you, my brother, my sister, whoever is the one giving you the resistance. I truly honor that you have the best intention for me and the reason you keep bringing this up is because you are worried about me you have fear about maybe me making the wrong choice listen carefully you just say that is that right you have to give them a chance to puke you have to give them a chance to get it off their chest. You will not move that relationship forward until they get it off their chest. You need to be really clear on that. So I will repeat, feel, felt, found. If they drop it, you're good to go. Don't try to push your stuff on them. If they come back at you, they didn't hear because they have attachments, because they are worried about you and it could be because you're challenging their system. So you say to them, I love you. I honor and appreciate very much everything that you believe. I'm guessing that you worry about me. You don't want me making wrong choices or harming my spiritual future. And you stop. You let them release. They'll say, yeah, da 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 And you listen. And you, you, you give them an authentic heart, okay? You're not there to convince them. You are there to heal your relationship, guys. From the belief system I came from, everything is karmic. This person that is, no, 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 Guess who you very likely were in a previous lifetime. You very well could have been that person beating down somebody else's belief. Not a pleasant thought, is it? But a very real possibility. Okay. Awakening those that we care about can only happen through love, through honoring, through forgiveness. The forgiveness is while they are da 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 
in your heart you're saying please forgive me this soul and all of the other souls if I have ever been this way towards you not honoring and respectful or if I have ever been defensive trying to save you but I had my own agenda you see you have to be that person that sees the bigger picture so that you can be that compassionate person that lets them dump and then after they dump you say I understand and you repeat that's all you do is you repeat people need to be heard people want to be listened to when they're dumping somebody already posted yeah but they just keep on coming at me why why do they keep coming at you you did not hear them validate them honor them if you hear them validate them honor them which doesn't mean change your perspective or theirs what does it mean hear them validate them honor them what are you doing you are deflating their fear-based balloon you are deflating the I'm right balloon you are deflating everything that they are that are separating you two you get it so be the compassionate person that recognizes why they are being this way honor their perspective when they dump you simply repeat it back to them so you're fearful about this you worry about this you're concerned about this and you think I'm spending money here and da 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 and they may do one more download they may do one more dump okay yeah and blah 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 great you need to be smiling you need to be going wow this is awesome I am getting much closer to mom to dad my brother my sister that's really what needs to be going through your head because you are with each time they dump and each time you validate you are getting closer and closer and closer your hearts are getting more and more and more open why because they don't know how to express their fear they don't know how to express their concern they don't know how to say I am attached to my belief system and if you knock down my belief system it could hurt me they don't know how to verbalize all this guys so you don't have to tell them you just honor yours and you honor theirs and you allow them to go through their processes when you allow them to go through their processes the amount of times they may bring up something negative is definitely going to minimize the openness to what you are doing will with time increase you might not see it but if they're one of your Facebook friends your stuff hits their page and they'll spend a few more minutes checking it out and they'll uh, hear things and they'll start to crack open the possibilities why because you took the time to open your heart you took the time to reconnect with them the way they have remembered you this is truly the path to honoring yourself and honoring others getting along with others as the title of this getting along with others when they are not happy with your awakening that's the big picture okay <laughs> so I hope that the way I've explained it uh, helps you to um, to uh, grab it enough to where you can apply it in your life because you will moving forward have lots of opportunities granted there are a lot more people waking up thank you God there's a lot of awakened communities which all of you belong to again thank you God um, but we still have all of those that are close to us and if we do not clean up our stuff with them because the reason they you know d dump on us the reason they dish on us is because we did that to them or somebody else in a different time very simple so we have to clean up that karma or we're just gonna have people doing that to us our whole life we're gonna feel like the outsider that nobody understands me blah 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 get off your pity potty okay it's just your story you need to be responsible 
That's always run through my teachings. Be responsible for your life. This includes those that are a bit more ostracized than you might enjoy them to be. Okay? That's how you do it. You do it with love, you do it with compassion, you do it with awakening. You claim to be awakened, well, apply it. And do your forgiveness. Okay? We'll do a quick forgiveness practice. And then I'll walk you through how you can do a soul communication with all of these people that uh, maybe one, two, or three, or four people that you can probably think of that you really want to fix you know, this separation with. We all have a couple of those in our life. If you do it once, will it work? Yes. How much? 100%? Unlikely. Be the same compassionate person, honoring, respectful, awakened person every time. Remember, the key is don't bring up your stuff when you're around them. Bring up their stuff. Be the listener instead of the talker. Be the one that helps them to remember who you are. And after you help them to remember who you are, they will question, start coming at you a little bit. That's when you move into this teaching. Okay? So let's do this forgiveness practice with all those that we, responsibly speaking, have separated. We have created separation. Not them. We blame them. Remember? We're saying they're the ones that are not awakened. I wish they would awaken. That's our attachment. We have to take responsibility for our part in the separation that may have occurred between us and our, our loved ones and our peers and the people that we care about. So let's uh, sit up. Bring our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, connecting our heart center to heaven. Close our eyes. Let us connect. If it's comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear all the beings of light that have come to this practice today, my individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, dear my soul, I love you all, on you all, appreciate you all very, very much. I ask for your assistance to Bless me to be conscious, to be compassionate, and to communicate in a loving and honoring way to those in my life that I have become separate from because of my awakening. I ask most humbly for your assistance, especially at those times when they challenge me with their limiting perspective. Please help me to remember my beloved God and all my heavens teams and my soul. Please help me to remember that they remember me a little differently. That they remember my love in a different way. Please help me to re Build that love through thoughtful listening, caring, validating. And when they open their heart again and talk to me about my awakening, please bless me, my heavens team, my soul, and my beloved creator. Please bless me to only share a little bit not look for their approval and let them grow with the very little bit that I give them I am very grateful thank you continue to repeat if comfortable dear all souls in all lifetimes if I have been very outspoken 
about my belief systems. If I have forced upon you my fears, concerns, and worries and created separation in our relationships because you were awakening and I was not. If I have ever judged you or criticized you for your belief systems, put you on the cross, so to speak, if I have ever caused you to suffer physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually because of my staunch, unmovable belief systems or my inability to share my fears, worries, and concerns in such a way that you recognized them for what I really meant to say, then I sincerely, sincerely apologize. I offer all souls in all lifetimes my unconditional forgiveness. If you have ever brought to me conditions in which I have felt judged or criticized, conditions in which I have felt separate, not honored, approved, appreciated, or respected for my spiritual awakening and awareness. I release all souls of this karmic debt they may have incurred to me and invite those souls to further awaken. Continue to repeat if comfortable. Dear the soul of, now I want you to specifically mention one, two, three, four people that you know you have separation with, ostracized with, people that you care about but have went in different directions because of the subject matter. Invite their specific souls into this soul conference at this time. <coughs> I'll give you uh, 10 more seconds. Invite their souls in. Dear these beautiful souls, my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, my grandmother, my mother-in-law, my, um, my wife, my husband, you know. Dear these beautiful souls, I love you with all my heart. I respect you. Thank you for being my brother, sister, husband, wife, friend. I honor very deeply our connection. I honor very deeply your love for me. I wish to sincerely apologize if in this or any lifetime I have been not respectful of your beliefs, if I have put you down when you were awakening, if I have criticized you, if I have offered fear or control or uh, inappropriate wrong communication that has caused you to feel inferior, less than um, uh, a black sheep or anything other than loved and respected. If I have done this in this or any lifetime, my beloved family, friends, husband, spouse, etc. I sincerely, sincerely apologize. I wish very much for our relationship to heal in this lifetime. I do not want to go lifetime to lifetime in which you judge me, I judge you, you criticize me, I criticize you, I'm the black sheep, you're not. I don't want to play that game anymore. I ask your forgiveness if I have ever been this way to you. I offer you from this moment forward my unconditional forgiveness for your communication to me. I offer you my unconditional forgiveness for the judgments and criticisms you have offered to me. I offer you my unconditional forgiveness for your inability to share 
what you are thinking in a way that is not honoring of where I'm at. I forgive you entirely and completely. And I ask your forgiveness if I have been these ways towards you. Dear these beautiful family members, friends, brothers, sisters, husband, wife, spouse, as we move forward, when we communicate, I promise to you that I will listen better, honor and validate where you're coming from better. Create a relationship between us like it was in the past and return the love that was there. I ask that if you wish to know about my spiritual awakening, I ask that you communicate with me in a loving and honoring manner as I will with you. And when I tell you that I ask that you honor my growth and where I'm at and I tell you I honor yours and where you're at, I ask that you from now on honor where I am at, free of judgment, free of criticism. Let us move our relationship forward in love, peace, and harmony. I love all of you, my beautiful family, friends, husband, wife, spouse, I'm very, very grateful for your presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we'll chant because this is very real. You have invited these souls, they are listening to you there is change occurring as we speak we will now chant uh, I forgive you please forgive me bring love peace and harmony for a few minutes send them love give them hugs ask forgiveness let us chant I forgive you you forgive me bring love, peace, and harmony. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. See those relationships Closing the gap. If it's friends that you miss, see them calling you, connecting with you. If it's mother and father, see them honoring you. You're getting together and the subject matter that has created separation is no longer there. You're having good, happy times like before. If it's brother, sister, same, same. Visualize that. I forgive you. You forgive me, bring love, peace, and harmony, bring love, peace, and harmony, I forgive you, you forgive Forgive me, <clears throat> bring love, peace, and harmony, bring love, peace, and harmony, I forgive you, you forgive and harmony bring love peace and harmony now give these loved ones a big hug tell them you love them tell them you look forward to reconnecting with them you can repeat this soul communication especially if you truly care about them and you want to re rekindle and heal the relationship, then you need to do a simple practice like this. You sit down, you call their souls, 
you ask and offer forgiveness, and then you chant love, peace, and harmony, or this I forgive you, you forgive me, love, peace, and harmony. Um, chant for a few minutes. When you communicate to their souls, you communicate win-win. I love you. I want very much for us to work this out. I want to honor you and your perspectives. I ask for you honoring me and mine. Um, uh, you know, there's a way in which we, this can work out. Because at the soul level, you can go ahead and share now. At the soul level, the souls want everything to work out. The personalities, that's ego. Personalities are ego. Your ego, their ego, it's not going to work, guys. You're just butting up against each other. But in this lifetime, you have the opportunity to let go of ego. You have the opportunity to dissolve the karma. You have the opportunity not only to dissolve karma with family, but with all the souls. Maybe you have judged, criticized, put down. Uh, you know, We know the history of the Catholic uh, burning of, of the witches, burning of the heretics, burning of many souls, right? We know the histories of the, the Jewish and, the, and, and all of this. So there's very likely a history in which our souls have really hurt others for our uh, inherent belief systems. We must do our forgiveness practice around that. If you do this just a few times, three, four, five, six, ten times, you could be very surprised that friend you haven't talked to in five years could call you out of the blue. Um, you could open up a communication with a loved one, parent, or spouse that hasn't happened in a long time. So the wisdom is not a one-time wisdom. If you want these relationships to heal, take responsibility. Apply the wisdom. For those that came in in this last 20-30 minutes, you missed the meat of the material. You really must go back and listen to the beginning because the beginning sets a very conscious, important stage of understanding where people are coming from, why they come from that perspective, and how we were those people. It positions us to have the, the context in which we can be a detached, loving person and rekindle and heal these relationships. Okay, Because uh, you wouldn't have arrived at this live stream if you didn't have this issue in your life. And this live stream provides the solution. It's very simple. You just got to put it in place more than once and you'll be fine. Okay? I want to hear about your results. I want to hear about um, how you've been able to rekindle these relationships with your loved ones because you put this wisdom today into practice. An additional step you can do that will help you a lot. I've, I've talked to you ad infinitum forever to play the Love, Peace, Harmony song. Download the Love, Peace, Harmony song. It's in one of Kristen's uh, posts. But you can ask that song to offer blessings to these relationships. Take a picture. Put it next to the music player. Dear the soul of Love, Peace, Harmony, please bring Love, Peace, and Harmony to this relationship between me and you know, my spouse, me and da, da 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 especially in relationship to my awakening, and they're not quite awakening yet. It, you, you can be very, very surprised. that it, it speeds things up a lot. Okay, so for again, for those that came in late, uh, you missed a lot of good stuff. Um, there has been. Uh, uh, please share. How was this wisdom for you today? Did you get any aha moments? Do you feel that it can assist you? Um, are you going to apply it? I want to. I want to see a showing of hands. How many people are going to apply this? How many people uh, are going to heal some of these relationships? No that if you choose not to do anything, your awakening will be less. Why? Because you are inhibiting other people from awakening. If you do not go back and heal these, they also will not awaken. You want them to awaken, right? But how can that happen if you do not open their heart again? Their heart is closed to you anyway because of the separation we spoke about. So go back, heal these things. By bringing them this heart opening, their heart will open enough and their soul can then bring them in the appropriate way for them, their awakening. Can't do that when their heart is closed. Okay? So it's our responsibility for our part in the relationship to do the suggested guidance on this live stream. I want to offer a calling to all of you for... Um, uh, becoming aware if you're not already of my 12-week open 
Spiritual Channels program, Awaken Your Spiritual Channels program, in which I talk about and offer uh, wisdom, downloads, treasures, and blessings for the five major energy centers, the seven chakras, and the energy and matter channel. It's a 12-week program. It's only $360. For those that can only handle monthly, it's uh, 150 a month. But it's 12 weeks, guys. It's, it's, it's you know, you get extraordinary wisdom you're going to get blessings at my level and you'll have opportunities to open your spiritual channels uh, connect to divine down source in a much much higher level when you clear these kinds of blockages through this kind of practice you will have um, huge aha moments release of health issues is very possible release of emotional issues is very possible release of life struggling is very possible simply by attending this 12-week course because those are natural side effects of clearing blockages in your energy centers, okay? They're all interconnected. So please uh, learn more about that, Kristen. We'll post the link in the chat box, and you can come to that and register. For all those that watch me that truly, and I mean truly, have significant financial restrictions, if you get one of your friends to honor the normal full honor fee, if you have truly financial restrictions, you, my student, uh, can can get the entire event for 25% of the normal honor fee. Okay, so that's like what? 90 bucks? Okay, so 90 bucks for 12 weeks of, of, of incredible teachings if you can get a friend to honor the normal honor fee. And that's only for those that have true financial restrictions, okay? So I want to make sure you're not left behind. So um, help me, I help you. I hope you enjoyed today's wisdom and guidance. For those that came in late, do yourself a favor start from the beginning watch the whole live stream this can very much benefit you if the topic resonated with you watch the whole live stream okay love you love you love you thank you thank you thank you i will see you tomorrow bye bye everybody